That was hilarious. Okay, um, now we're doing four dash eight isosceles and equilateral triangles. Okay, I don't know how much writing I'm gonna do, but it's pretty easy, but it's pretty dang important. Okay, there's always an open response related to this isosceles triangle. Okay, now I'm bless you. All right, isosceles triangle. Okay, a isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. It can't have three, but usually we call that equilateral, but it still qualifies as an isosceles triangle. Okay, so a isosceles triangle has at least two legs congruent. Okay, now, here's the deal. The congruent sides are called the legs. All right, now, here's the other thing you need to know. It's called the vertex. I need to draw it. Dang it. So we have an isosceles triangle. These two are congruent. Those are called the legs. All right? This angle between it is called the vertex angle. All right? Now, vertex angle is always between the two legs. All right, what else? All right? Now, a lot of people think of the base as whatever's on the bottom. Well, I can turn this upside down, and the base is still going to be whatever is opposite the vertex angle. That's our base. So we got the legs, which are the important ones. They're congruent because most of the time your legs are the same length unless, you know, you had a bad leg missing accident. Okay? So legs are congruent. Base is always opposite the vertex angle. It's pretty much whatever's left over. Okay? It doesn't mean it's always on the bottom. Like I could turn this upside down. Base is going to be up here. Okay? So base is not the legs. Legs are congruent. Base is not. And I'm going to give you one guess on where the base angles are located. They're right here, okay? Base angles are right here. Base angles. Right here and right here. If you walk away from this lesson with one thing, one thing, I want it to be this. It's called the isosceles triangle theorem, okay? The isosceles triangle theorem says... If two legs are congruent in a triangle, then their opposite angles are congruent. If two legs in a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. How do you tell which angle is opposite a leg? It's whichever, the only angle that that side is not touching. It's this one. It's touching those two. This one's opposite. Okay? Opposite angles they're going to be the same. If this leg is 7, this leg is 7, they're congruent. If this angle is 80, which, yeah, if this angle is 80, guess what this angle has to be? 80. They have to be the exact same if the legs are congruent. The exact same. All right? Now, two legs in a triangle are congruent, then their opposite angles are congruent. Now, Converse, we know, means switch it, okay? So last one's isosceles triangle theorem. This one is called the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. It means you switch it. If two angles are congruent, then their opposite sides are congruent, okay? Triangle, isosceles triangle theorem, if the legs are congruent, then the opposite angles are congruent. And the converse of isosceles, if the angles are congruent, then the sides are are congruent. The opposite legs are congruent, okay? So it's just switching it. Legs to angles, angles to legs, okay? The end of that, all right? <clears throat> that was isosceles triangles. I hope you remember that, please. Equilateral. A lot of people get this mixed up with equiangular. What does equiangular sound like? Equal angles. That's what it is. Equiangular means the angles are equal. Now, equilateral means that the sides are all equal. If it's equilateral, one side's six, then the other one's six, and the other one's six, and that makes the devil's number. I'm sorry, I use six as an example. Let's say seven, that's prettier. Seven, 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 okay? That's the day I got married. Don't tell anybody. All right, so we got an equilateral triangle. If it is equilateral, if all of the sides are the same, guess what that means about all the angles? They're the same which makes it equiangular. That's why people get it mixed up, because it's, if it's equilateral, it's always equiangular. And guess what? If it's equiangular, it's always equilateral. Guess what? You can also guess which, what the angle measures are. If every equilateral 
or equal angular triangle you ever used, you know the triangle, the angle measures. If I say this is congruent to all those, this is 7, this is 7, this is 7. That means that their opposite angles are all equal. Just like an isosceles, if the, tri if the side lengths are equal, opposite angles are equal. Same thing here, except for you've got three of them. It means all three of these are equal. What do we know? The inside of a triangle always adds up to equal. 180 degrees. What is the only measure that can be equal to itself, itself, and itself, and add to 180? If you said 80, you're wrong. If you said 60, you're correct. It's the only thing that adds it to itself three times and adds 180. Only thing. Maybe something else. Boom. Well, you can't. Okay? So, you got equilateral triangle. Sides are equal, so the angles are equal, which makes them so good. Equal angular triangle. Angles are equal, so all the sides are equal. And then you would have to figure out the side lines. And that's it for this section. If you've got a problem, Call your local mom.